Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Mr. Cobalt and today we are going to go over how to use your conversion factors to convert from one uh, unit to the other uh, given a certain problem. Um, so we're going to start out basic problems in this video and we'll get more and more difficult as uh, we do other conversion problems. So <clears throat> In this uh, two problems, it's very clear what they're asking you to do. So the first step in any uh, conversion factor problem is you got to figure out where to begin and where to end. In these problems, um, it's clearly stated where you're going to begin and where you're going to end. So here they, they're asking you to convert for the first problem, they're asking you to convert from 1.76 yards to centimeters. Uh, in this problem, they're asking you to convert uh, 1.8 quarts to cubic centimeters. So it's very clear where you're going to begin and where you're going to end. It's not so clear when you have larger word problems and you got to figure out uh, what um, information to use and all that stuff. Um, but we'll we'll work on those later. So. <clears throat> We know where we're going to begin and we know where we're going to end. So you just start with the beginning. So they give you 1.76 yards. So I'm going to write down 1.76 yards. And I always put it over 1. So there's no unit down here because they only have one unit and that unit goes with the number and that's on top. There's no other unit. So we're not going to put a unit on the bottom. Sometimes you do, but not in this case. The reason I put it over 1 is because we're going to be multiplying by conversion factors, and those are ratios or fractions, and um, I just want to make sure that everything is lined up properly so that when we multiply and divide, we don't make any mistakes. Okay, so I have my beginning. So... The only thing you're going to be doing from the beginning to the end, everything in the middle, is your conversion factors. And you're going to keep multiplying by conversion factors until you get the unit on top that you want. In this case, centimeters. So we're going to need equalities to build up our, our uh, conversion factors. So we have equalities here that we're going to use. Um, they might be given to you or you might be expected to know them. If they're like English to metric, then you're probably going to need to look them up or they're given to you. If they're metric to metric, you might be required to know what those are because you should know the metric, uh, metric uh, uh, prefix multipliers. Okay, so <clears throat> my first conversion factor, I'm going to put a, a line. Um, I, need a, I need yards on the bottom because I have yards on top. So I'm going to put yards on the bottom because I need these to cancel out if I'm going to convert from one unit to the other. Now I need an equality that's going to help me build this out. And here's my equality here. So since I have yards on the bottom, this part goes on the bottom. So 1.094 yards. And then the other side goes on top. One meters. So now yards cancels out and now I have meters. Am I done? No, because I have meters but I need centimeters. I don't stop until I get the unit I want on top. So this means I need another conversion factor which means I need another equality. So I'm going to set up my next conversion factor the same way. I have meters on top. I'm going to put meters on the bottom so I can cancel those out. And now I need meters equal to some other unit. Um, I need centimeters, so I can have a u I can have an equality between meters and centimeters. So they're metric units. So if you know your metric unit, uh, metric multipliers, your prefix multipliers, uh, you can fill in the missing part. I always put the one with the uh, prefix. Because if I know my prefix multiplier, then the prefix multiplier goes with the base unit. So if I'm comparing the prefix unit with the base unit, I put the 1 with the prefix. And since centi is 10 to the negative 2, I put 10 to the negative 2 meters. So now I have my equality. I can use that as a conversion factor. 
So I put 10 to the negative 2 meters on the bottom, and then the rest goes on top. So the other side goes on top 1 centimeter. So meters are going to cancel out. I have centimeters on top. Centimeters is what I want. So now I am done. So at this point, all I do is multiply across the top and the bottom. And, and I mean multiply across the top, divide by the bottom, and I get my answer. So the answer, you're going to spit out an answer uh, on your calculator. And that's going to be something like uh, 160.8 uh, 75, and so on. So your calculator is going to spit out a bunch of digits. We need to figure out whether or not we can keep all those digits. We can't keep them all. And this is where the rule of sig figs and decimal places come in. So you got to remember that when you multiply and divide, the rule is your answer that you get can only have the same number of significant figures as the least number of sig figs that you're using in your calculation. So here you got to remember that if you have exact measures, you can ignore those because those are going to have infinite number. And obviously infinite is, is not going to be the least number. So anything that is exact that you multiply by is uh, going to be ignored as far as sig figs go. So here, whenever you have a metric to metric unit relationship here or um, equality or conversion factor, that's going to be exact. This is true by definition. Same thing goes for English to English uh, metric uh, units. So if you have a conversion factor that relates English to English, that's going to be exact and you can ignore it. Um, the main, uh, most of the time, pretty much all of the time, except for one instance, if you have a relationship between a metric unit and English, that's not going to be exact. That's going to be a measure, so you need to worry about that. So this number here I need to keep track of this is uh, I gotta look at that one and the number I started out with is, is a measure that they gave me and I gotta look at that one the ones you don't need to worry about ones ones uh, are ignored so here I have three sig figs so this is three sig figs this is four sig figs so my answer can only be the same as the least number which is three so I'm going to cut it off after 160, cut it off there. So everything else gets ignored. I have an 8 here, so I need, uh, I need a round. So 8 here, so I need to round this up to a 1. So this is going to be 161. Oh, I forgot the unit. You, you, can't forgot, you can't forget the unit. No naked numbers. Remember that. No naked numbers when you're uh, doing science. So you always have a number with... A unit. So this is 161 centimeters. So you would report this as your answer in the end. So that's your correct answer. 161 centimeters. Okay. How about this one? Let's try this one. So same thing. They give me 1.8 quarts. They want cubic centimeters. So I'm going to set up the problem again. I'm going to start with what they give me. So it's 1.8 quarts over one. Again, I don't have a unit on the bottom because I don't have any other units except for quart and quart goes, oops, wrong one. Quartz goes with the 1.8. Okay, so I, I, have, I put it over one to create the fraction or the ratio because I'm going to multiply by my conversion factors, which are ratios. So now I'm going to start with my first conversion factor and again I'm going to be using conversion factors one after the other until I get the cubic centimeters which is the unit I want okay so I put quartz on the bottom because I want quartz to cancel out and here's my equality again you're you're not expected to know these equalities they're probably going to be given to you by your teacher or you're going to look it up in the back of the book or the appendix or the internet. Um, so you're probably not expected to know these. You probably are expected to know your prefix multipliers and the equality between your uh, metric units. <clears throat> so, 
So here I have my equality. So uh, I have quartz on the bottom. So one point, so one point zero five seven quartz is on the bottom, and one liter goes on top. So quartz cancels out. Um, and so now I have liters on the top, but I need cubic centimeters. So am I done? No. So I need another conversion factor. So I keep using conversion factors until I get the unit that I want on top. So I have liters on the bottom. I'm going to set up my next conversion factor. So I have my liters on top. I need to put liters on the bottom. And so now I can use liters to milliliters. Um, so here, milliliters, um, if I have this equality and this equality, then I can convert liters to milliliters. And here I have milliliters, I can convert milliliters to centimeters cubed. So um, I can use milliliters. Now I have liters to milliliters. This is a metric to metric equality, so I need to know my prefix multipliers. So again, I always put the one with the prefix. So the unit with the prefix gets the one, and the base unit is going to get the prefix multiplier. So I need to know the prefix multiplier for milli, which is 10 to the negative 3. So the 10 to the negative 3 goes on, top, uh, goes on this side. So now I have my equality. Now I can put 10 to the negative 3 there. And now I'm going to put this side on top. So uh, 1 milliliter. So the liters are going to cancel out. Now I have milliliters on the top. So I keep going. So now I can use this equality. So I need one more conversion. So I don't have the unit I want. So I keep going. Milliliters is on top. So I put milliliters on the bottom. Um, this one milliliter goes on the bottom and then one centimeter cubed goes on top. Milliliters cancels out. I have my centimeters on the top. That is what I want. I am done with my conversion factors. So at this point, I am just going to multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. And what you should get is 1,702.9328. Okay, so now I have the number that the cal calculator spit out. So at this point, again, I need to figure out sig figs. I can't just leave it there. You're not going to get full credit. Your teacher's going to mark you wrong. <clears throat> okay, so again, I need to figure out uh, sig figs. Again, you eliminate the exact measures, which are going to be either English to English or metric to metric. So one centimeter cubed and one milliliter cubed, that's metric to metric volume. You can ignore that. That's exact. Uh, liters to milliliters, that's exact. Metric to metric. Uh, uh, metric volume, metric volume. So that's exact. Ignore that. Here we have metric to English. That's a measure, so you need to pay attention to this number. And then this number was given to you, that's a measure in quartz. So now you're looking at the sig figs. Remember, my answer can only have the same number of sig figs as the least number that I multiplied by. Here I have two, here I have four. So the least number is two, so that means that my answer can only have two sig figs. So one, two, I stop after the seven. And then I keep the one seven. There's a zero here, so I don't need to round. I can't leave the number 17. If you write 17, that's totally wrong because seven, 1,702 is not the same as 17. So you need placeholders for these numbers. So this is supposed to be 1,000. This is supposed to be 700. So you replace what you dropped with zeros. So now that you have zeros there, that would be your answer. No decimal point, two sig figs. I hope this is helpful. Um, please uh, tune in again, like this channel, um, subscribe to the channel, ring, uh, you know, ring the bell, and um, I'll see you guys next time.